Cheers, cheers, bro. Cheers. There you go. God, these are good. Oh, oh shit! What flavor is this? I think it's cucumber, cucumber. lime. Do you never add like a uh, like chamoy on it? I add vodka tahin. to it. Just, just vodka? <laughs> More vodka. To More it. vodka yeah. to it, but never like tahini. No, chamoy. I don't do like any sugar or any like candies that like in general like ever. You'll never see me eating candy or anything. Sugar. Is it because of the hangover? No, it's more to keep my six pack year round. Oh, uh, <laughs> we saw it's, that on the. It's, it's how I stay shredded year. We round. saw that on the, on the interview video where you. I asked you, um, what's your pick favorite? What was your no, pickup line or something? No, no, like it was a. Uh, I forgot, dude. I honestly forgot. Yeah, yeah. yeah what's yeah, your pickup like, line? Pick line? You're like, I'm like, this is my pickup line. And you show your bicep. I, t- I told you to show your bicep, man. Oh, you show yeah. your whole fucking core. I was like, I okay, know. like show off <laughs> but nah welcome guys to one more episode of the 91 vibes sorry <clears throat> today i have a special talent special talent bro <laughs> he's a special talent obviously guess, a yeah. special talent but say that. special i guess influencer uh producer in el paso i always wanted to bring to the to the podcast he goes by snack or snacky snack dj snack snack daddy your hero whichever and <laughs> do, you, do you ever use your, your real name? Uh, I rarely do. I mean, just people that are close to me know my real name. Uh, I Honestly, like, some people only know me as Snack. So, I mean, unless they ask me for it, I tell well, them. Where, where, did it, where did it come from, the Snack? Um, so, the story goes is uh, years ago, mm-hmm. I was at a music festival. Um, this one called Decadence. It's in Arizona. Okay. Uh, this was like, like six, seven years ago, bro. This is a long time ago. Um, we were, uh, at a stage or something and, um, I was on, on Twitter and, uh, DJ snake and dead mouse were beefing on Twitter. They were talking shit like uh, to each other on Twitter mm-hmm. and DJ, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Dead mouse called DJ snake, DJ snack. And I was like, Oh fuck. As a, I, as, a, as a joke, like sure. called him DJ snack. And I was like, dude, I like that. So <laughs> like right in the middle of the festival, like probably rolling dick. Like, I changed my Instagram handle to DJ Snack, like, right then and there. Yeah, like, I was surprised what, that it was even there. What you had before that? Before, I think I really just had my name. I think it was an actual name. Mm-hmm. So, it probably said, like, Manny G or, I don't know, something like that. And then, uh, but, yeah, I, like, I just changed it. And then I actually kind of forgot that I changed it. And so, so one of my friends was like, bro, I can't find you on Instagram anymore. I was like, oh, it's because I changed it. I go by D- DJ I'm Snack. I'm DJ Snack now. now. So that's kind of, it just stayed like that ever since. And for years, people would ask me if I DJ. And like, I didn't. I didn't DJ for years um, until like a year ago, really. Also, you used DJ Snack even before DJ. Before, yeah. This was just mm-hmm. like because I thought it was hilarious. I just decided to use it. And, but I mean, I always manifested like the whole DJ thing. So I was mm-hmm. like, I was like, maybe I'll use and, it. Maybe and it'll I, become. I've seen you use the, like, like, you're a snack and I, I've seen you use the theme of the word snack into yeah. other things, such as uh, the vending machine. Yeah. So the vending machine as in snack, right? Exactly. Yeah. So and and it goes a little deeper than that. So like the vending machine, um, I des- I designed to be like a bunch of different genres, just like you would see in a vending machine, a bunch of different candies, a bunch of different items mm-hmm. to choose from. Yeah. So that's what the vending machine was. I pretty much showcased my versatility as far as like all the genres of music that i like and that's what became the vending machine and then there's snack time which is just like house tech house so like and then there's midnight snack which i haven't released yet so that's kind of on the and and i've seen you you only uh i well i haven't seen on the regular bars like Mm -hmm. you know cnc area stuff Mm -hmm. maybe you've played it i've just haven't seen you but you just stick to tech house, house music, and all that stuff, right? Yeah, that's pretty much all I stick to. Is is I don't want to call it EDM, but um, just like the rave scene or underground scene. I don't I don't play top forty. I don't play, you know, hip hop or mm-hmm. reggaeton. I mean, I do, but if it's it's like in a tech house remix yeah, I, or something. I, 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 I honestly uh, listen to all your vending machines. Oh, thanks. And bro. I think on the last one you start with the rock song, right? Yeah, yeah, Guns and Roses. You yeah, use yeah, Guns and Roses, and then F, when the beat's gonna drop, you change it up, and I was like. That's pretty solid. Like yeah. that was really original, honestly. <laughs> but uh, I was gonna say, uh, how how do you engage with the crowd in in every show you do? Like, what what's the, you know, because any, any anyone can play any BPM uh-huh. music, right? But how do you engage with them in order to get them pumped up? I mean, for me, um, I, I I like to be better. I've I've come a long way from like my first shows where like I was literally just like looking down and just like trying not to fuck up and shit like yeah. that. 
um but like now like i i really try to i really try to play like really up tempo music like even if it is like i know some some tech house is just very repetitive but i try to like give it like my own little spin um and try to play like songs that like make you go like ooh, like 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 dirty kind of drops and stuff like that um I, at one point i was actually throwing out like fucking rice krispies in the crowd once. oh shit yeah like i did that at prickly elder one time i like bought a bunch of rice krispies and like i would throw them out like at a drop or something um which i probably should do something like that or keep doing or get yeah, like a, a cannon funny. that like shoots out like skittles or some shit i don't know but yeah i mean that's that's kind of like the, the things i've i've done in the past um but yeah i mean and also like take my shirt off i think i did that at southern limon and people ate that shit up <laughs> and, and even though they know they're aware you just play house music how many people to this day ask you hey play some black bunny bro i and it's not just me I'm is it sure a thing this, now is oh it a thing yeah now? is it like a it's, it's a trend right to it ask is bro bunny? yeah it is it is like just a thing to like tell anybody who's playing music is to play bad bunny which is funny too because i have a lot of bad bunny tech house songs that are actually really dope and yeah. some that I've, I've made edits of um but i can't tell you how many times like it really does get kind of annoying because like I mean, not, not not as much for me. I'm sure it is for more more like DJs that do play top forty and stuff like that. Because usually with me, like they know that that's what they're gonna hear. Mm -hmm. um, but the rare occasion that I do play like at a bar where they're used to like that kind of music, yeah, I'll get like the one occasional like drunk girl that's just like play. And I always tell them, like, dude, you just missed it. I just played it. I was like, like I, it's one song. Yeah, I say it, one song. I say yeah, it. I was like, you missed it. You should have came here early. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> I think I I stalked you a little bit. You were into the rebel scene, no? Oh, you were in the God. rebel scene? Oh, you dug very deep. Yeah, yeah I got yeah. you. I did my yeah. homework. So, did so homework. who do you choose to hang out with? What what rebel <laughs> gang were you at? Damn, we're going to go that far. Yeah, so, yeah, let's yeah. see. I think the first rebel crew I was in was, it was called Innocence. Innocence. And this was, this was the gang sign, actually. What year was, was this? It was, this, was, this was like in high school, dog. This was like sophomore, not even, like freshman year. Your class of what? I'm class of 09. Oh, shit. Yeah, okay. class of 09. Okay. Yeah, so it was like that, and then uh, Cobras, and then of course, everybody. I was never in Blue Boys. Uh, mm -hmm. I knew a lot of Blue Boys. Um, all Stars, I mean. All Stars? I was, don't know what All Stars is. That was, that was the, this was the, <laughs> dude, I, it's funny. I don't remember all the fucking gang signs. No, because I, I was part of the Rebel scene, too. I, oh, yeah. I danced Rebel. But I never really joined any of them. Okay. I was honestly, I was like one of those like pussy guys, you know. Like, I don't want to <laughs> join any of them because I don't want to get my ass kicked. Because there was always drama, you know. Oh, a bunch always. of drama, bro. And I know from Cobras, they went to Rivals, right? Uh -huh. They did Rivals. I don't, yeah. You're already a little bit older. I was probably a little those. older from there, yeah. So that's that's where when I was like the Cobras went for Rivals, and then the Essentials were like oh, big the now. Essentials, that's right. I remember. I was, I was was always scared of the Essentials yeah. and stuff like so. <laughs> I still remember all of that, but. It did, did the rebel scene actually influence you a little bit to start DJing? Um, it didn't. Inf well, I guess it was you could huge. Say, oh, it was. Like the, the, I remember the music industry here in El Paso. Like it was all about house music, tech house. Format B was here like every two months. Mm -hmm. Pop off, um, Morgan Page. We had all these like yeah, nice, bro. nice. A uh, pleasure craft, pleasure craft. Now pleasure yeah. craft. I'm sorry. I love pleasure craft. But the last time I saw him play. I don't know what was that. It was a green door. Did someone that was so popular back in the day that I first watched was this guy named Bad Boy Bill. Bad, Bad Boy Bill. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was yeah. one of the first yes. guys that I saw, and I was like, man, what the fuck is this? Bad Boy Bill. And he was always here in El Paso, and he was really dope. He, honestly, I, I kind of ran, uh, not ran into him, but I came across, like, his Instagram the other mm -hmm. day, and he still kills it, dog. Yeah. Like, it's, like, till this day, that fool's still putting out music, still killing it. Um, so big ups to Bad Boy Bill. But he was one of the first dudes that I, I saw, like, that. at Club 101. And I was like, holy fuck, this is this is awesome. Like, what is this? And Dude, Club 101 was the thing everyone used to hang out with. Now, what is it, like an insurance building? I don't know, something, Pff, something weird, no right? I have no idea. I'm, it's, it's was on Airways. I think they put yeah, an Ocos Locos on top of it now. No, right no, now. no. <laughs> There's something <laughs> next to it. It's like a red building now. They paint it red and stuff. And I'm like, bro, yeah. so many, like, things went on there. It's some illegal stuff that. Very illegal <laughs> you stuff. Know? But so, so you think the rebel scene influenced you too? You say, you know, I want to DJ. I want to be like these people. It definitely, what it did first, what it influenced me into the music first. Okay. It was, I didn't really think about actually DJing till probably like my junior or senior year in high school. Okay. Um, but early on, it really just got me into the music because before that, I didn't really listen to music. Mm -hmm. I wasn't really into music. I was into like my parents' music. Mm -hmm. um, but I never really, I guess, 
uh, found anything that like really resonated with me. I didn't really relate to a lot of some of the music. Um, my girlfriend always makes fun of me when like she's like, "You don't know who this is. You don't know who that is." I was like, honestly, like I really don't. Like I probably I've heard it before, but I couldn't tell you who the artist so you, is. So you grew up with what kind of music from your friends? I mean, my dad listened to like old like rock like ccr and like bob seger and my mom listened to like disco shit so like you got parents of culture bro that's yeah. what i grew up with too you know yeah i mean i think that's a, like a lot of people's parents yeah. grew up with so i mean that's really what i listened to but i really liked like the disco type of sound so i think that kind of influenced me a little bit into like what house music is now so. I, I grew up with armin van buren that was my first ever like live show in juarez oh, and shit. i was like oh damn you know like this is this is crazy <laughs> and not not what's the name of that bar uh club they have now in Juarez? Um, you're talking about they closed it down and then they they opened it back. Pop, a hard pop, hard pop, hard pop. Have you ever played in hard pop? Did you ever make any connections there or stuff? So I I su supposedly I've been to hard pop once before it closed. Like mm -hmm. when I was younger, I don't remember. Um, but no, I have never played at hard pop. Um, I would love to play at hard pop. It looks like a really dope. Yeah, dude, place. I that's that's well that's the. The theme there, you know, it's just oh, tech yeah. house, all this. So I was like, why? I've never seen you post any stuff like that, you know? Yeah. You're always posting, going here, going there. I was going to ask you, what what has been the best venue in El Paso that you played at? That it's not like a like a big festival. Like a big festival? Just like a regular venue. Um, What's a good place? I, You know, it's funny, but a place that's always a vibe, no matter, like, whether it's Thursday, Friday, Saturday, or whatever is prickly elder i love playing at prickly elder there's people go crazy there i love it, Prickly Elder. yeah dude and, and what's great why i think is so great about it is that people go there to listen to a different type of music so they're, they're not there to listen to like your regular top 40 mm -hmm. and stuff so it's a vibe every time do you think it changed at, before co before COVID to now because i think it used to be very different i think it's I think it's changed in the sense of like I went there when there was a hookah launch. I used to hang out there when it was a hookah launch. Oh, oh I don't, don't even think I went there. And when I it played there. I played a FIFA tournament in there, dude. Like oh, it was really? like that, that, like old old. Okay. And then they changed it to like playing like different different DJs every single day and stuff like that. Yeah. Sorry, the beer. And <laughs> and now it's like I don't really go often, but now it's the different vibe there. Oh, it's, for sure. But it's a very friendly vibe now. Yeah, yeah. It's very very uh accepting like very f sex sexual friendly how do you say that <laughs> sexual friend i was saying accepting but <laughs> uh, how do you is the beer buzz uh, i mean you mean like uh, gender, friendly. gender friendly gender friendly yeah friendly. yeah yeah, yeah. very gender friendly yeah, now yeah, yeah. it was not like that before not saying they, they weren't accepting i'm just saying right, right it's very friendly like that now oh and, for sure and there's a lot of cool like people are so awesome there bro like everyone's fucking cool you know? oh yeah very again friendly yeah yeah but yeah, nah, that's that's one of my favorite uh, bars now because of that. Because of different, even even I've, I've heard like, you know what uh, cumbias tumbaos is? I don't. It's like this type of music from Monterrey. It's, it's, so it's cumbia, but it's like very low pace. Like the okay. BPM is very low. Like dum, 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 dum. Okay. Like very very low. And I've seen they play stuff like that in there. So oh like, shit! Like it's very I don't know. It's very interesting. That's cool though. I mean, like usually I've only gone when. Well, actually, I've gone there when they played like some like breakbeat stuff, mm. like really crazy like sounds and stuff. Um, but that's cool that they incorporate all that. Yeah, too, very, very different music, and I don't know. So there's your favorite. That's um, that's one of my favorites. Mm. Um, another really cool place is I don't know if you've been to Function. Function's really cool place. Mm. It's very like underground, like warehousey vibe. Um, mostly like uh, like hard techno, techno. Okay. I only, I only been to Club Here. I love you. Club Here. Oh, it's uh, I. It's a like a breakaway from that. I mm -hmm. I want to say. Um, but it definitely is a little bit more like like hard techno. Type I, I, vibe. Do you, Do you think we need like a in El Paso like a underground type of bar with like trance like music? To, 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 honestly that place would probably hit it for you that's actually uh speaking of that place they're gonna have the boiler room event mm -hmm. there and that's gonna be hella crazy because because so. in one of your uh vending machines i heard you put some trans music and oh yeah bro that was honestly that was one of my favorite because <laughs> i grew up with them like um, army member and ts yeah, yeah. stuff like that yeah yeah i grew up with stuff so when you put when you incorporated that I, I don't know how you did that fucking switch on that <laughs> that song bro that was amazing though i'm not gonna lie like i, I love what you do do you um 
do you only have those vending machines or do you have extra work that you work on so i have the vending machine and snack time i am going to release one called midnight snack which is going to be a techno hard techno side mm -hmm. of me and then um i do have a bunch of edits and mashups that i'm planning on just giving away like as a like a pack for free on soundcloud um I, the snack time you 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 charge um, i'm not sure with that oh uh, snack time no so snack time is just like a for like a set like kind of like the vending machine but it's mm -hmm. on it's on soundcloud okay. but i also do snack time events which is at desert palms which okay. i just had one last week um do you know where, where good times is mm -hmm. well so upstairs is desert yeah. palms so once a month i throw a show there mm. and um but it's it, we don't charge it's free um it's pretty much like what you would kind of see like at prickly elder the visuals and like stuff like that and it's just house music all night and so oh, fuck, I, for, I forgot what i was gonna ask you <laughs> so i mean i mean i'm so interested in what you do oh so right now you what, what, what can you see your age yeah i'm, I'm 31 so you're 31 uh, you're doing what you love now, right? You're just yes. focused on that. You don't have any other jobs. Yeah. So, um, DJing don't pay the bills mm -hmm. like, um, but yeah, I, so what I mostly do is I day trade. Um, and then DJing is like my passion hobby that I do. Um, but Be yeah, I mean, before all that, what, what do you used to do? Because I'm going through the transition of, uh, I want to do what I love. Oh yeah. The things that I enjoy. Yeah. And, I'm putting, even though I shouldn't, I'm putting like my main job as a secondary thing, as mm -hmm. a second priority. So when I, where I want to go with this is, um, what in what moment you you said you know I'm gonna change this? I'm I tell me where do you used to work before this? And you said I gotta do this now. What motivated you to do that? Yeah, so I'll take you on the journey. Um, so right out of high school, um, I had a scholarship to go play baseball, and I had no interest in going to college really. Um, I didn't find it. I mean, to me, it wasn't, I, baseball was like my life at one point. Um, but once I graduated college, um, I got a job at GNC. So I was a store manager at GNC for like eight years. Um, and then, well, about a year later, COVID happened. So got, you know, I left GNC, COVID happened. Um, I was also working part-time at the community college, just doing like audiovisual stuff mm -hmm. um so as i was like collecting an unemployment check from these jobs um i decided like i'm gonna like either reinvest this money because i mean you couldn't do anything really i mean you could spend it but yeah. i kind of saw it as a chance to like i bought cdjs so i was like fuck it i'm just gonna buy them so i got them and then i was like fuck it i'm just gonna like reinvest it like do do something with it um I learned how to day trade. Uh, it took me like a couple months to really like get the hang of it. Mm -hmm. um, started making an income there and it was enough to kind of like sustain me. And then um, I just said, fuck it. Like, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna shoot for it. And uh, some people are, are will, will tell you that like, I had been talking about it for years to do that. So like everybody will tell you like, oh, he definitely manifested it. Like he always said that he would do it one day. And it wasn't like till like years later I did it. But I mean, I always say, really do be careful what you wish for because i mean i had been wishing for that for years it took forever to happen but do you believe on law of attraction yeah yeah i do believe like what you put out in the universe like it reciprocates in some way now obviously like you know what i was putting out there uh was like these massive dream like want to be like the next fisher or whatever but i mean you shoot for the stars and land on the moon and before i knew it like i started to like kind of look back on it like just a couple months ago like man like if you would have told me like a year or two years ago that I would be doing this, I would probably be, there's no way. Mm -hmm. Like I would say you're, you're lying. Um, so like, it just kind of like, you kind of don't see it happen until it happens and you realize, Oh shit, I, it happened. Like it's good or it's happening. So it, it happened at a very small scale, but I mean, it's graduated to this. And I mean, I plan on pushing TJ snack to see as far as it goes. I mean, you, you think it was luck or a percent percentage of opportunity? Um, I think it's both. I think a lot of, do you believe in luck? I, like, I, I don't believe in luck. It's like more of an opportunity. Um, I think, uh, right time, right place mm -hmm. kind of thing. I do believe in luck though, because there are some times where, you know, you kind of don't, how could I put it? Like there was times where, I wasn't really trying to be like DJ Snack, but 
somehow like I was just getting lucky with like just being asked to do certain shows and I because there was a point where like I kind of didn't think I was gonna like really do it like I, I started it and a little early on I was kind of like oh shit like should I really do this like I mean I took a financial hit mm-hmm. pretty heavy I was like you know I, I definitely don't make the kind of money that I used to back then but I mean to me it wasn't really about the money it was more about the freedom and when once I had the freedom I was like man like I I could care less about the money like money's nice um and I've had the money like up there but I wouldn't change it for like the freedom that I have now just to do what it is that I do do, you, do you, and do you classify yourself as like the top one percent of people your age that are successful mm, probably not dog you don't I, think so? there's, there's some people uh and I, and this is just me being like really honest there are some mm-hmm. people that are just more gifted than I am but I guarantee you I'm probably gonna work harder than most of the talented gifted people mm-hmm. that are out there you know what I mean like I may not have the gift I, I i don't think i really do because i you know some of the stuff i produce isn't that great but i feel like the harder that i brand myself the more that i put myself out there and the harder that i work like i think people take notice in that just as much as the talented guy that doesn't really you know put in the effort to brand themselves and start do stuff like that so yeah and and you said it took uh years to get to where you at <sighs> bro i took like six years how, mu- how much more uh discipline took than motivation in those years yeah i mean it's honestly it wasn't until like the last two years that it really just kind of like put yeah. i really just said you know i'm just gonna do it, it re- honestly what it really is i think we're i think the mistake people make is just worrying about like failing i there was a time where i just worried about failing for so many years and one day i just or one year i was just like who cares if I fail? Like mm-hmm. if I won't know unless I try and God and lo and behold, I tried and I haven't failed yet. At least I don't think I have. Um, so it's like, I think when people take that aspect out of their, their mindset of like, man, what if I don't, what if I fail? What if I fail? Honestly, you're never going to know unless you try. And at least if you do fail, you can look back on it and be like, Hey, like I, like if DJ snack were to fail, I can look back on it and be like, at least I did it. At least I can, die happening knowing that i tried i gave it my all and you know so that's why i always think like people just need to get that failure aspect out of their mind and just just shoot for just go for it bro honestly nice dude i'm asking all this because i'm I'm, like i said i'm going through it you know yeah i'm 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 still very green in what i do and stuff but it's always nice to get a a perspective of someone else it's doing what they love like you you literally doing what what you love now You, you have a you have a partner with you now as well yeah like how how much does it a partner in your life influence you to like push yourself and actually be successful in that? i'll tell you this if it wasn't for my partner danielle or savvy yeah. diaz a lot of people know her, there wouldn't be any dj snack you don't I, think so I, I, absolutely not there Damn. i can tell you for certain if it wasn't for her uh there would not be no dj snack and uh i'll tell you why because th- th- that one year where i decided to actually just do it she was the one that would be because we would go to shows obviously and i would be that one guy that would criticize like i i in my head out because like oh like oh, that sucked that that song sucked or that drop sucked where he fucked up here like you know what i mean and she's like well you're so if you think you're so good at it why don't you do it like you always say you're gonna do it but you don't do it and like so she kind of like would egg me on like mm. a little there like that until like it really kind of like like she's right like i not that I was talking shit, but like in my mind, I was I would I would criticize, thinking I mean like everybody does it. Like when you're watching football, you're like, oh, how the fuck did he drop the pass? Like right, right, right. it was right in his hand. Like dog, you have no how, how idea how hard it is to. Yeah, you go and do yeah, it. Yeah, you go and do it until I did, it, and I was like, oh, this shit isn't as easy as so I she, thought it was. She pushed you as like, the yeah. fuck you do it. Yeah, dude. yeah, exactly. She's like, Look, yeah. if you think you're so good, then you do it. So. How long has she been in your life now? Um, about almost ten years now damn bro yeah so 21 22 yeah so yeah i want to say like 21 22 is when we so the story between me and her is we were each other's first boyfriend and girlfriend Mm -hmm. uh when we were like 13 14 Mm -hmm. uh we broke up during high school and then we kind of like rekindled uh after college so yeah i want to say like 21 22 is when we got back together damn and then the dj came to like 
years later yeah we both worked at gnc she was also a store manager oh, at gnc so that's, oh. yeah yeah Damn, you guys are meant to be bro you guys are <laughs> soulmates <laughs> yeah on, in many ways we really are because uh it was just like getting back together was so easy like um i mean obviously there was bumps in the road and stuff yeah. like that but um uh, it was always one of those like we knew we were just going to be with each other like no matter what the fuck happened mm -hmm. but of course when you're young like i mean you're young but i mean now it's it's like dog we love each other we're, we're not going anywhere <laughs> nice. well i'm open i'm open this cherry cola i never you're gonna like that one. one actually so shout out but by, by the way uh you want to say anything about these yeah yeah free so out, bro. this is a uh, all uh products uh from lnf distributors um they uh distribute the alcohol throughout el paso um and uh i partnered with them and uh to do um a couple like posts and stuff so oh, wow whoa is that tasty or what that's very tasty man <laughs> damn damn this is really good this is really good see I i'm a lightweight so <laughs> if i open the third one uh the interview alex is gonna come out right now, so. <laughs> well maybe we'll have to shotgun the third one <laughs> okay i was gonna ask because i did my homework i did my you know mm -hmm. to to I mean, we, 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 we pushed this interview a few, maybe a month or more. About, I want to yeah. say. So I've seen on your Instagram that you and your girl always have different outfits, different costumes. <laughs> so why is that? Like, do you guys still do that? And, and who comes with the ideas? Because I've, I've seen you wear the, the, what's that guy called? The guy with the, under the water. Uh, under the water? Fuck. What do you I mean? This superhero under the water. Oh, I, Aquaman. Aquaman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I yeah. So I've seen you wear that. I've seen yeah. you wear. Uh, what, what was the other one that was so funny, dude? I mean, we've done like Forrest Damn. Gump and Lieutenant Dan before. We've done. I mean, I've well, the, the Aquaman one was like a body painting thing. There was one that was hilarious. I just forgot. <laughs> I don't say the names and I'll, I'll remember. Were they like like Halloween costumes? Yeah, I've just seen. Oh, yeah. uh, we did like Tiger King. T Tiger King, that that was a funny <laughs> one. Dude. How do you? Who comes up with that? Was it you or her? I, I come up with it. She she. That was actually the first year that she didn't have to wear a mustache because almost like every year she's had to wear like some kind of mustache. Because for some reason, like I make her into a dude on Halloween, <laughs> so she was actually pretty happy to be like a normal like tiger, I guess. Um, but yeah, I mean, I come up with the the costume ideas. Uh, she kind of just rolls with it. Um, but and you guys should do it. Oh yeah. So it is. Yeah, do you we, guys any plan for this year? Uh, we, So we were going to do uh, Wanda Vision. So I was going to be mm. Vision. She was going to be Wanda. So that's still the plan, I think, for, for this Halloween. Damn. And you yeah. guys do anything special for Halloween with, with the costumes? I mean, we usually have like a Halloween party with like our, our the friends that we hang out mm -hmm. with. Um, we were supposed to have like a really big Halloween party on, well, during 2020. Mm -hmm. But I mean, obviously like the whole covid thing yeah but um i don't know we always just go crazy with the costumes because everybody i mean i'm into it i love halloween so it's my favorite holiday yeah. too bro <clears throat> and it's it's this year this year with um with the interviews i i actually i'm trying to let this hair grow to october okay i want to be the joker dude the last joker the last joker there so, you go That'd be, you, you should do give it like a spin you should do like like a mexican joker hmm. or you know what i mean like give it like because everybody's like the joker but you can be like i don't know like a different like a like make it like your give it like your own little twist or something hmm. you should you should give me ideas because yeah yeah like, i was just thinking of the joker but i gotta make it <laughs> funny because imagine imagine a joker making interviews yeah 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 but like do it like um man, what, what would be kind of good like I'm telling you, like a Mexican Joker, like a like a Joker with a like a mustache or something, like would be <laughs> hilarious. Yeah, one. just grow it out, and that'd be mm -hmm. kind of that would be kind of funny. With the hat? No, 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 Mexican hat. Why not? Do with like a sombrero or something, <laughs> and call it El Joker or something. El Joker. <laughs> <laughs> just put the L in front of anything, and it's it's El Mexican. That. Hey, that's a good idea, yeah. bro. Do you have any questions for me before I keep going? Uh, yeah, I mean. Why why'd you pick me on your podcast? What did I pick you? Well, because like I told you before, uh, obviously, because I I DM'd you right. Yeah. I, I I random followed you because I think you came out on my what's that feed call on Instagram when? Oh yeah, like your search feed. Yeah, it it came up as a as a flyer. A flyer mm. came up because I'm I'm always into what's going on. You know, I always ask you what's going on here, what's going mm -hmm. on here. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I like to like go and and try new stuff. 
uh, I used to uh, very, be, be very self-centered and not go out a lot, just do my gaming or, or gym. or now, I never really liked going out. Mm-hmm. So then I, it's been like maybe a year and a half that I started going out again. And uh, I saw the flyer. And I was like, oh, who's this guy? And I'm like, the, the, your name was catchy. Like, yeah. DJ Snipe was catchy. So I opened it up, and I was like, oh, shit. Like, this guy makes tech house like, music. So I started checking out your stuff, and I was like, yeah. oh, damn. Like, I like his stuff. Like, his stuff you don't really find no more. Yeah. And, I mean, there's obviously a lot of people that still do it. Yeah. But I like your shit. Like, I like your stuff. And I was like, damn, yeah. like, let me DM this guy. And then I listened to Aaron Scene's podcast, and then I saw your name there as well. So I was like, okay, <laughs> let me listen to this guy. And then I heard your story. I heard, I'm like, damn, like, I want to talk to this guy now. Yeah, like, yeah. I, don't, I, don't. I, I've, I heard you in the podcast, but I never heard your backstory. And I want to know about your backstory. Like, yeah, who yeah. is this guy? What does he do now? Like, yeah. Because for me, uh, from outside of your life, you look very successful. Mm-hmm. But I want to know. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck bloopers. <laughs> but I wanted to know who, who he is and, yeah. and what he does and you look very happy dude and i i want to i want to get to that point in life as well yeah. maybe i'm i don't know if i see you like as a how do you say it like as a motivation person in my life maybe mm, i mean but i don't know you're you're there i, I was very interested in your, in your thing and i'm really glad i have you here right now and w- i mean we're in your place not even <laughs> in my place you know so, so i'm very grateful for that you even welcome me into your, oh yeah of course in, in your own home but yeah 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 uh, but I that's cool. you for those reasons you like I just think you're a very chill guy, and I, and I met you randomly. You know, I met you at sisters, yeah. sister Esther, sis, sister Esther's. S- fuck the beer, bro. <laughs> sister Esther, and uh, <laughs> you were a cool vibe, dude. Honestly, you were a cool <laughs> vibe there. You were with your friends and stuff. You had, you were having a good time, and I was like, nah, this this guy's chill. Because like, <laughs> it has happened a lot. I mean, maybe you don't have to say names, but it has happened where someone looks good on social media and they're friendly and they're cool, and mm. then you meet them in, in yeah in person and they're 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 assholes yeah they're dicks so i'm glad that i met you like live and having yeah. fun and everything i was like all right but like after i met you like that, i was like we, we need to do a podcast because this guy's pretty chill for sure so that, that was the reason yeah. that's cool man i mean thank you for having me i i don't i don't do a lot of these um and i don't mind doing them um and you were really cool when when we met too <laughs> i mean i'm I'm cool with everybody i was uh, fucked up i had to i was i was fucked up <laughs> but uh i mean it's that's kind of always been like my personality is uh i do really just get along with everybody i mean i i I don't see the point in like being the asshole like Mm -hmm. i I guess because i mean i've also also heard like don't what's that saying don't meet your heroes because you could be disappointed right because that happened to me yeah before yeah yeah so i mean that's one of the things too is like i don't want to be if i were to become that guy like i don't want to become the asshole or what they think is like an asshole like i've always you know treat everybody with respect and i've always treated everybody you know um just you know like the cliche thing treat everybody the way you want to be treated but at the same time it's like i, I don't judge anybody you know what i mean like i don't judge what you do or how you do it whatever it's like dude i'm just here and, and why did you say yes to me i mean you asked and i didn't see like a problem doing it i mean it's a mm-hmm. uh, you were pretty funny with like I saw your video, oh, the which one? the one you did with that that I was in. Oh. So I I started scrolling through your Instagram. And I was like, what the, what the fuck did this guy ask? Like, what? But I mean, I like it. I liked you because uh, you, think- you were clever. I like cleverness. Yeah. So like you asked like questions that required like critical thinking, but are very like obvious things. Mm-hmm. I I like that because you can catch people like off guard like obviously like when they're partying and stuff like that but i really did kind of wish you had asked me some of those questions because I, like i would i would saw someone like oh like i actually knew the answer to those questions even if i was fucked up i'd like to think that i would have got them but i like i like how you you stump people uh, on certain things I, I try to make it different you know like obviously i'm not the first person that does stuff like that right but i always see in them videos they only ask one question mm-hmm. and they they write with that question through the whole video through whole clips so I wanted to make it more fun. I, w- I always keep it like this. I ask a very risky question, mm-hmm. a very intermediate question, and then the trick question. Yeah. Why? Because at the f- at first, I give them the, the, the dirty question, and they're like, oh, like, you know, they get all pumped up about it. Yeah, yeah. I get the intermediate, and they're just, like, answering normal, and then I give them the trick question. They're like, whoa. Yeah. What do I say now? Yeah. 
and that's when that's when, when they say on. that's where I get on. That's when they say like yeah, yeah. whatever they say and it makes it funny. Yeah, yeah. But I couldn't ask you in that moment because it was too loud, you know. It, it was, was too <laughs> loud. I couldn't ask you anything there, but I did whatever I could. I I did it right there. But I don't know, man. I it's it's the things that I can't even post on video. It's crazy. You know? Oh, like, I'm sure like, you you have some people saying some wild shit. Like I'm, I'm surprised they even let you post some of this. Bro, stuff. Th- there's stuff. There was a girl. I'm not gonna say her name, obviously, and the name. She. Uh, I forgot what I asked. Oh, I think it was um. One of the first videos, it was like a message to your ex. Okay. And this girl went off on video. <laughs> she grabbed my hand and she was like, I want to let know this motherfucker that he's a fucking this. And he cheated on me with this person. And his name is this. Oh, she went shit. off like she pissed blasted off. Him. Yeah, like blast. And I was like, right, I can't post that, you know? Yeah. It, even though it was hilarious yeah, for me. Great content, but. I can't post that. Yeah. Why? Because she said a name. Yeah. She said what he did. Yeah. And. I don't know how big that guy is. So if I post stuff like that, they're going to come to me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And not to mention, but boy or girl, that's one side of the story. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, like, unless you get the, the guy to come on the show, too. But, like, she can say whatever she wants. And it could be completely true. Don't mm-hmm. get me wrong. But that's always just one half of the story. Like, you never know, like, what really, really happened. So I have that. And then I had a... How should I say this one? I... This girl, I know she has a boyfriend for years. Uh-huh. And she was hitting me up on camera, dude. Ooh. Like, she was all up on me. She was intoxicated. Oh. I, obviously, I was. She I had that liquid courage. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't do anything, obviously, like, out of respect because I didn't know the guy. But, yeah, like, I, I can't post stuff like that, you know. Mm. I just went up to her because I know her personally. And then she's, she does stuff like that. Yeah. And she did ask me, hey, you don't post that. And I was like, no, don't worry about it. Like, I'm not. But it's like, come on bro like you have a boyfriend now yeah it, it's so hard to trust people in, in bars now honestly i'll bring it up. i've seen so many of the same women same guys in every bars like it's yeah. it's, it's so weird dude. oh yeah they're always in the same place they're yeah. always same bars every yeah, say, yeah. every day like how, how hard it is for you that you're a dj you have all these women maybe all over you they dm'd you mm-hmm. i know guys guys dm me too but i, I get more guys than girls but how, how how does you, how do you d- deal with that and how does your girl deal with that? Um, you honestly, you'd be surprised. I've gotten so many times that I'm intimidating. Mm-hmm. I don't know how or why that is, um, but I really don't get that many uh, girl DMs uh, as much as I do guys. Guys are they don't give a yeah, fuck. They, <laughs> they will. I will get <clears throat> dick pics. I will get. Oh, I haven't I received mean, that yet. Yeah, dude. I I get the guys are are wild um but yeah no i you'd be surprised i i don't really get hit on all that much um my girlfriend i mean i guess because a lot of people they know that me and my girlfriend been together forever and she's on my instagram mm-hmm. on her instagram um they see us together um but yeah I mean, you honestly you'd be surprised i get that question asked a lot is like oh dude like so like do you curb them like how do you do and i was like dude honestly like i it's very rare that I really do get somebody that I have to be like, yo, like chill. The so they don't out. come up to you or nothing. Occasionally they do. Um, but like I said, you'd be surprised. Like there was this one girl that we became friends uh, because she used to go to my shows. And one of the times she told me, she's like, dude, like you're not, you're not who I th- thought you would be like in person, like to hang out with. You just, you seem very like intimidating to be around. And I was like, I was like, I don't know, mm-hmm. like, why that would be, but I mean, I, that's I've heard that multiple times, and I, I don't know why that is. I really, no, really you don't like intimidating. Well, I, not I don't me. think, yeah. I mean, I'm not even that jacked, bro. Like, bro, I, I, <laughs> you ain't gotta do shit to me, bro. Like, I gym, but come on, bro. <laughs> I mean, is it the biceps? What is it? The sunglasses? I don't know. Nah, what it is. I, I don't know, but <laughs> it, it it's just. Uh, it's it's uh, it's hard for me to date right now for the same reason because of the type of videos I do. Yeah. And obviously, I, it's for content. Like I I I hit on guys and I hit on girls on video. Yeah. But it's obviously for content. Like of I've never course. done anything with any of, of the videos, mm. any of the women on the videos. Mm. But guys are crazy. Yeah, oh yeah. Guys are crazy. Yeah, yeah. They're they, they're wild, bro. It's just I don't. Have you ever thought of opening an OnlyFans for them? I did. Uh, so I did make an OnlyFans this year on april fool's day because hmm. i did it as a joke because we also had a i we also had a show I, I threw a show with my friend chad at prickly elder and we called it cunt life 
because his shows was were called Cult Life, and we're like, oh, we're gonna rebrand and we're gonna call it call it Cunt Life, and uh, so I decided I'm gonna pretend, well, not pretend, but I'm gonna make an OnlyFans and release it that day. And I had like a side, even took the picture over there underneath the disco ball, and I had the disco ball like blocking my junk, and I was like completely <laughs> naked, and I just had it like blocking my junk, and I had like a little thing like lol or like april mm. fools or something like that so you didn't mean to actually make no it. i didn't mean to actually make it, but i got like subscribed like a lot of subscribers <laughs> so they, they really thought that i was starting an only fans but it, i thought it was obvious it was on april fools Bro, you should run it what do you I mean? mean it's easy money it is because I mean. i've thought about i mean I'm, I'm not i don't think i'm attractive like you know but I get DMs from guys, and I'm like, yeah. hey, what if I just make a fucking OnlyFans for them, bro? Dude, I mean, you can. You know what I was thinking, too? is like with, with the, that extra content that you can't really put out there, maybe you put it on the OnlyFans, and if you want to see it, but you But that's because I feel like getting in trouble. It's, it's, mean, bro, it's because the amount of content that you don't <laughs> understand that I can post. Mm -hmm. the mo it's, it's that risky? I didn't think El Paso was that crazy. It oh, is crazy. Dog, dog. But the amount of craziness that it's just... Mm -hmm. It's on this. It's on this PC right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just like I don't know. I mean, it's a good it's, idea. It's, but it's worth thinking about. I mean, just what if a bad person subscribes and gets that content and then they get in trouble? I mean, you run that risk, I guess. Yeah, but that's why you make it really expensive. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> there's been fights. There's been titties, ass. Damn. I mean, people but then calling out people. That's the other thing too is like I don't know um, like what the rules are with people like showing titties or stuff like you know what I mean like if they're not like do they have to sign like a waiver like a disclaimer like you know what I mean like, what do you mean well I don't make it's, I've never told a girl show your no 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 like if they just do it like on their on their own uh, kind of thing but I mean because you know like I don't know if you know this guy named Kirill Kirill you should look him up okay. he's hilarious but he. There he was, does interviews as well. He doesn't exactly do interviews, but he's like this party guy. Okay. But he get like girls do just dumb shit like for atten like for his attention, I guess, when he goes to like parties and stuff. Um but I mean he's made money just like just, just by content. Yeah, just like by that. content like that. So I'm just like, dude. Dude, I should try that. That's what I really want to I don't know, man. Like I want I want to take this everywhere you know I, i've never said that it's on camera but i, I want to I take this outside el paso as well but right now my my f main focus is get, getting known here yeah and here and there i get known you know i'm like yeah. that, that tiktok guy tiktok mm -hmm. guy or stuff like that but that's but how it starts i want to make i want to go to vegas i mm -hmm. want to go to cali i want to go to arizona yeah i want to go to florida yeah and do the same content over there yeah everyone like like i said i'm not the only one but i just want to make it unique and i have so many ideas in my head right now that i I don't throw them out yet because I want to make it happen and, and, and be unique, dude. Just like they say, you want to be successful, be different. Yeah. Stuff like that. Yeah. So. You, you can't, you can't do what everybody else is doing because it's too much competition. Mm -hmm. But if you make it unique and also just make it your own, like it can be very similar to what somebody's doing, but what the, where the uniqueness comes is you, mm -hmm. the you part, like, I guess, like, for me, for example, it's, like, there's a lot of DJs in El Paso, mm -hmm. a lot of DJs. Folklore. But what, how do I stand out from all those? I mean, besides what I play and stuff like that, but how I look, you know, how I act, whatever, maybe the persona that I put on. For example, like, is Fisher. Mm -hmm. Like, everybody knows Fisher. He's this wild character, whatever. But he's a show pony, like, a big show pony. And, like, a lot of people may not even like his music, but they just like his persona as being like fisher so that's kind of like who i'm trying to emulate a little bit so but in my like my own like dj snack way you would you know? say fisher is one of your favorite uh, producers um i would say he's more of like so dj snake is the one that i'm trying to like i wouldn't say like portray but i i like the image that he puts mm -hmm. um and i like his like his sets are so versatile and that's what i like to like i I can play tech house all day, but like a lot of people don't know, like I play hard style, I play techno, mm -hmm. I play so many different things. Um, but the Fisher is to me is like I like his style, like I, I like like the dumb shit that he says, like the the wildness, the partiness, you know what I mean. But DJ Snake is like that that cool like like plays like all these like crazy like kind of music kind of things. So you're trying to put both like both into together. You. Yeah, I would say like I'm trying to like mesh both together. Those are your top. Give me your top three favorite DJs right now um damn man that's 
I, I would say Chami. I and and I I I love, love Chami forever. Um, I mean, I may not play a lot of his music, but he's one that like really turned me on to like like the type of music that I like to play. Mm-hmm. Um, DJ Snake's up there. Um, Fisher's up there. I really like this guy Wade. <clears throat> Wade's really dope. Um, but there's just so many like. I feel like now in in my career, like there's so many like smaller DJs that I like more than like the really like headliner type type DJs. So like, what do you I think mean, it is? Because the the new DJs are coming out more hungry. I think it's that, and because like when you when you realize that like the big headliners are playing the little DJs music, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Because they're they're up and coming. They're probably sending them the music stuff like that. So a lot of the times, that's kind of like where I stay is like the up and coming type artist and or i try not to be like super mainstream even though like i can get there um or i try to give it like my own little twist but yeah i i try to keep it to where it's not super mainstream and then i think that's more important to and me you do stay up to date with like the new like the latest music trend and stuff yeah right now, yeah yeah i mean i try to like i try to keep it where like i really really like to give the audience where like oh fuck like i've never heard this song this way kind of thing mm-hmm. so i always try to give it like that kind of that kind of like that kind of sauce i guess like to to my to my sets and to and to the music that i play um but yeah i i try to stay away from the mainstream as much as possible mainstream everything mainstream news <laughs> <laughs> mainstream media <laughs> mainstream like that's just all bad for you dog but um yeah i try to keep it not not completely underground but you know what i mean like Any instruments that you play? Uh, no, man. I actually, no. I played the trumpet when I was in middle school, but okay. I, that didn't really help me. <laughs> I've seen, like, I, I know uh, Dead Mouse uses a lot of uh, the piano. Oh, that's one. If I could go back in time, I wish I would have learned to play the piano. I played piano for a year. Really? I was not good that good, but mm-hmm. I know, like, the basics of it. Yeah. And something no one knows as well for me, I used to, well, I, I told you off camera that I used to make videos, right? FIFA yeah. videos. But I used to see one of my cousins, uh, DJ, mm-hmm. make songs. So and they used they used to do that software, DJ. What it was, DJ something, super old DJ. Uh, like to make music, uh, or to, to, or a virtual DJ, virtual DJ. Mm-hmm. And and I downloaded virtual DJ, and I used to do that, dude, on my little ass HP PC. Yeah, I used to do that thing, and uh, that's why it's one of the things that that I like about you that I can like relate because I was like, oh, I used to want to do that, yeah. but I never really did it yeah i like i said I, me i grew up with former b djts so yeah. both all that stuff so i, I try to like mix all this shit, yeah, yeah. <laughs> not knowing like the bpm not doing anything right right but i don't know dude it's it's it's, it's it, uh, ah, fuck you just took me back dude. it's crazy you just, <laughs> you just me, like, like reminisced a little yeah, bit yeah <laughs> like because uh, like i said i see you like someone that i wanted to be with but i never did and i'm doing something different now that i yeah. love and It's it's crazy. Like you do music now, you do stuff like that. Yeah. Is there any type of music that you don't like to play? Um, like any music that you wouldn't mix? It's so it's not that I don't like it. It's just that uh, it's just not part of like my music mm-hmm. that I like to play. I guess like you say, I, I don't play dubstep. Dubstep. I don't hate it or anything like that. I think uh, actually one of my really good friends makes makes really good dubstep. His name is Volgram. Mm-hmm. Um, And it's just it's just not part of like I feel like what I would play, mm-hmm. but um, I I try not to bash on any music only because like, I mean just because I don't like it doesn't mean like uh, other people would like it or doesn't make it not good or or good or anything like that. Um, but dubstep would be one, and then I I don't play like um, what what's that genre like uh. It's like melodic, I don't know, like, it's like trance kind of, but like a melodic, I don't know, it's like a, whatever Rez would play, I guess. I, I wouldn't play like, it's it's like like a softer dubstep, mm-hmm. I guess, I don't know. But yeah, I pretty much stick to like the bass house, tech house, house, techno, and like the hard style. I don't mm-hmm. go, I don't really deviate from any of that, so. All right, so we're back. Um, we're back. We found this lady outside the apartment. Yeah, she was selling pizza <laughs> like three, three yeah. for five dollars. So yeah. I don't, I don't know if she found it in the disposal. <laughs> we we found her laying down outside, and the cats were licking <laughs> her toes. <laughs> she was outside in the rain doing rain water angels. I mean, I didn't see that, but. <laughs> 
there so, you go. So, uh, introduce yourself. Who, who oh. you are? Who are you? We, who are you? Who are you? <laughs> yeah. um, hi, hello. I am um, Danny, aka Savage D, aka um, Savage Princess. I don't know what you want. <laughs> Savage Princess. That's a new one. Savage Cowgirl. <laughs> what, do you, what do you prefer though? Uh, Danny. <laughs> Danny, Simple. not Savage. No, my name is not Savannah. <laughs> As uh, people think it is because of Savvy, but no, my name is Danielle. Savvy, you can call me Danny. Danny. So many names. And you're what from Mr. Snack? Oh, yeah. Who are you? Ooh. Jimmy? Who am I, babe? Oh. Who am I? Um, I've been with roommate? you for 10 years. <laughs> Who am I? She's been my roommate for the past year and a half. <laughs> he won't propose to me. Uh, yeah. oh. so. Yo, that's right. That's right. That's the... That's the that's <laughs> That's where I want to get to. <laughs> oh, well, that's why he we... doesn't want to marry me? I'd love to get into that. So, yeah, so for the reason we found her outside. <laughs> so you're saying she's still for the streets? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I am still available for anybody who wants to marry me. <laughs> Thank you. Wow, we're taking applications. <laughs> okay, first of all, I'm sorry for the nasty S SMR we're doing right now. <laughs> this is really good. No. Yeah. yeah. This is a really good pizza. Yeah. Good job. Non-GMO. Good job, now, lady. I know you're avoiding the question. <clears throat> Why haven't you proposed? <laughs> yeah, I don't want to ask Gwen because that's something you have in mind. But mm. Yeah, babe. Why haven't you proposed yet? She's yeah. making the proposal so difficult because where I was going to do... Well, I told her recently. No, the place he was going to propose to me is closed. <laughs> so, like, our relationship is basically doomed. No way. <laughs> yes. Club 101? <laughs> no. <laughs> 301? No. Yeah. No, uh, the, uh, uh. the <laughs> one golf course that we had our first kiss on, like, literally, I don't know, 15 years ago, is mm -hmm. closed. Well, so. You were going to do it on the golf course? I was going to do it. I was going to do it at this specific golf course that um we had, like, our first kiss and, like, our first. Like, when we first, like, got together, like, as boyfriend and girlfriend. And, um, or, like, our first, almost first everything. Like, we almost, like, I went to, like, second base. <laughs> On you, almost made a hole in one on that golf course. On the golf course, mm -hmm. yeah. Memorable golf Very course. Very memorable. So right now, um, a few minutes ago, we were talking about uh, Snag having a April Fool's uh, OnlyFans. <laughs> Have you guys ever thought about oh, yeah. having an OnlyFans together? Together? Yeah. Uh I mean, we kind of didn't have it together, but like when I had one, he would mm. like be featured in it. No. Mm. You would show. He His snack. Oh my God. Whoa. The man. Out of me. His. I was showing the, the whole meal. His um, sausage. Oh, out. <laughs> <laughs> Tube steak. And why'd, but, you, why'd you stop though? Uh, Only because the clients I have right now are kind of a little bit more. Um, oh, so you still have it? Oh, um. Well, if their a renewal is on like automatic renewal, I get like their subscription costs, but I don't post anything on there just because the clients that I have right now are a little bit more old school. So I just wouldn't want them to find out about it. Mm -hmm. And and that, that's the only thing. What what do you do? I, I don't know what you do. I don't oh, know. um, I mean, I have my own marketing business. So mm -hmm. like I do, like it. Um, I'm basically like your one stop shop if you need anything from like a website to like ads, social media management. Um, photography, videography, SEO. I'm kind of like your go-to person for that. And I have like a whole team who kind of like delegates certain tasks for that and everything. Mm, how long have you been doing that for? I've been doing that for about almost four years now. Mm -hmm. um, what's called? So it was like my, my business partner, it's his business first. And then like I came in as just doing freelance work, and then he brought me on as a partner. Partner. So like, once I was like a full-on partner, I was like, okay, I need to stop like doing like my mm -hmm. <laughs> shenanigans. Shenanigans, yeah. <laughs> so, so it's something you love. That's the yeah. Uh -huh. okay. So I came a little bit more pro professional. So I was like, okay, like I'll stop my nonsense and put my focus into this. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you're a party girl as well, snack. Yeah, I I get paid to party, and I can't. I mean, unfortunately, I can't stop that part of my life, so. Nice. Yeah. All right, so I'm, I'm going to come with the spicy questions now, you know. We're okay. Gonna, we're going to take a 360 turn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, what well, has been the craziest place you guys ever got down? Ha had a good meal, yeah. Wrong. <laughs> I, I got to I'll gotta keep it snack theme, you know? What, the international, at international in the bathroom? Oh, my God. 
or maybe. I mean, for us, yeah. Cause that, cause they would bang on the door. <laughs> I I think the craziest place like you and I as a couple, yeah, has been at International. Yeah, in the bathroom. Is it make it more intense when it's like yeah. you shouldn't be doing it at that moment? Yeah, especially oh. when there was a line. Hundred percent, because it was like a unisex bathroom already, so like. Anybody could go in and people were like literally banging the door. <laughs> like, I was banging, like they minutes. were banging. <laughs> Everybody was banging. Yeah. Bro, what the fuck? I want to have your life. Like, you know, wanna... <laughs> Do you have any friends? They're, they're single. Oh, I have a lot of single friends. Yeah. yeah. I'll hook you up. Have you seen my content? Well, it's funny besides, I the first time I started to see your content was when you had Manny on there. <laughs> <laughs> What kind of banter was that? <laughs> I'm like, you can tell my poor man has not been single in years. <laughs> did, did you just watch his clip or you watch like the whole video? No, I watched the whole video. Oh, what do you think about it? It's funny. Do you think it's too risky? Am I, am I going over the edge? No, I mean, no. <laughs> I'm basing myself as of like stuff that I've done as like an individual. And no, your your stuff is hilarious. It's funny. I like it. See, I did. Mm. Yes. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> You're on a good track. Because I, I want to hear it. Um, uh, criticism, but the other word before that, S strict, strict criticism. No, strict criticism. What? Oh, like um. She knows the word. Yeah, like I'm giving you like, like positive. Yeah, like I want I want people to critique my thing and mm. know if it's good or right. Or what should I add to it? What should I stop doing? Mm. Oh, um, I mean, I I I say like if you um. Like, if you kind of, if you really don't care about, like, what people think yeah. about you, then, like, honestly, just go for it. Because mm. my thing is, I don't know if you know who, like, Kirill is, but... um, I with, mentioned him earlier already. Oh, you did? Yeah. Oh, okay. So, I actually always wanted to be, like, the girl version of him, but because I just, unfortunately, I just love to go out and I love to party. So, like, I've always just wanted to get to be paid to party and, like, promote parties. And he literally has zero filter. So if, honestly, if you don't feel bad about anything that you do, then mm -hmm. just like, honestly, just fucking do it because. You're going to have to look him up, bro. I'll look him You're up gonna for have to sure. Look him up. I yeah. can get some tips probably. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Um, just have no remorse for what you're doing, you know? And if you feel that like in your soul that this is what you're meant to do, <laughs> just do it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just heard Carl <laughs> in the background. You the meows? Carl's her cat, by the way. Yeah. yeah. He looks like Garfield to me. Yeah. He's our little baby. Carl. Um, <laughs> yeah, just have no remorse for what you're doing, you know? Mm -hmm. If you're having fun with it and you're making money off of it, then, you know, fuck what everybody yeah. else is doing. Yeah. All right, so you can ask me any spicy question. Okay. Mm, I mean, I don't know about that well, so, but I'll think about it. Whatever you want. Wait, how old are you? So I'm 27. Oh, okay. I'm a cancer. Oh, um. Do you believe in horoscopes and all that? Um, I do, but it's funny. Manny doesn't fall like under the category because like Manny and I are both Gemini's, and mm -hmm. like, I mean, I guess it does fall in a way because we're both like adaptable to each other. But like, he's not a typical Gemini as I am as a Gemini. You guys want kids? No. Fuck no. No. Mm -hmm. You guys hate kids? No, I hate kids. We, we don't hate kids. Who. We're just too selfish, mm -hmm. like with each other and like what we want to do, mm -hmm. like with each other. No. I serious. guess. What about your family? Does your family don't say like, hey, we want like, you know. Oh, no, they want us to have kids. kids. Stuff. What about adopting a kid? Mm. I would adopt the number one draft pick to the NFL for sure. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. like, how do you know? I, mean, <laughs> I asked for the genes and the, the genes. genetics, like fa family tree, all that stuff. We're mm. at this point if like, for whatever reason, kids are in our path, like, I think we'll take it, but if we can do everything we can to not have them, like, clearly that, but... Do you think a kid would affect your, your guys' career and the way you, you guys managed it? Mm. In a way, sure. I just think my pull-up game is just too strong, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> really? Yeah. Hmm. How, 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 how. Is your pull-out pull game just too strong, or... Were you that uh, horny boy when you were very young, and now it's really easy no. for you? <laughs> now they can't swim. I mean, he lost <laughs> they just his float. virginity they to just me. Float now. So I, I know. Don't know. <laughs> I did lose my virginity to her at <laughs> really? 14. We lost our virginity to each other. Uh -huh. 
Bro, I want to have something like that, you know, but it's so, I was telling him earlier, it's so hard to find something like that right now in El Paso, especially at my age. Oh, yeah, it's weird. Like, what we have with each other is, like, extremely rare in the world. Like, we, I mean, I was in middle school when we started dating, and, like, we, I lost my virginity before I was even in high school, so, like, um, yep. my mom was pissed at me. Mm -hmm. And then oh, her was we did our own, we did our own shit in, like, high school, beginning of college, and then, like, we, like, reconnected, you know. Later in life. When we were like 21 or 22, right? That was trying to well, like... Well, you were. I was yeah. 19. Oh, I was. Oh, yeah, yeah. We were 19. Um, Damn, bro. You yeah. like him young? Well, he does. <laughs> I'm not a cradle robber, but she could walk already. Let's just put it that way. Oh, my God. <laughs> Is Are, are you the, the toxic type? Um, or territorial? No. So it's funny. I like... Not that I used to be toxic, but because of the red light. The relationship I was in was very toxic. So, like, when Manny and I got together, he had to tell me, he's like, you really need to cut your shit because I'm not like this. <laughs> and it took me a while to be like, you know what, you're right. Like, you're not somebody that I need to worry about. And I was um, I was trying to make a toxic situation about something that wasn't toxic at all. Mm -hmm. But because I needed to get over what I w was with my ex. Yeah, like, don't, don't bring your past into your new Yeah, and... Um, it took me a while to like realize that and then I was like, oh, okay, like <laughs> he's not like this. He's never been like this and I need to stop acting like this, mm -hmm. which is probably why we have so much trust and like honesty with each other now because I literally tell him everything. <laughs> no, everything. To, yeah. Mm -hmm. Everything. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you, have, you guys haven't asked me a question yet. Oh, yeah. Do uh, you, uh, have you ever... Do you, do you like to have, um, do you like uh, toys in the bedroom? Toys in the bedroom. <laughs> See, most people, most guys don't. There was a guy that I knew that, like, he, like, thought it was, like, almost, like, disrespectful kind of thing. Like, um, I never used it in the, like, in the moment. Mm -hmm. I bought, like, that, um, mini vibrator thing. Mini vibrator thing. So, so it's, like, a little tiny thing like this, mm -hmm. and then she puts it inside it. And then I have a little controller. Oh. Oh. The little pink one. I don't know. I don't remember the color, but. I can go get it and show you. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather not. <laughs> I'd rather not see that. Yeah, uh, I know what you're talking about. Mm. And it has like a little, like a little, not a string, but it's like a little mm. wire that sticks out. And it's fun because um, I went to Applebee's with this person. And, <laughs> and while she was ordering, I was like, <laughs> you know? Oh, I have the two for 20, 20, 20, 20. So it was a fun night. And then I just put it on full blast on the way home and. You know, <laughs> but I, and, and during during our intercourse, I never used the uh, toys. I never no. I don't. I don't know. I never used it. No, they're fun. What What do you guys use? The wand. <laughs> the wand is the, probably the a best. Wand. It's, so what's it's the wand? Called the uh, wand. I mean, it's huge. or the magic wand. Yeah. Uh, so what is it? I want to know. I want to know. I it's know. like uh, we'll we'll bring it out. Whoa. Uh, I mean, it's is it is it cleaned? Oh, did you clean it? We're very um, sanitary. Does, does it smell like Garfield? I, <laughs> no. No? I mean, I, def I definitely never, like, experienced with toys until, like, mm -hmm. he came back to, into my life. So he was into it. He was the first one into he it. He introduced me to toys. I'm a, I never I'm a freak, right. ladies this and gentlemen. All right, bro. <laughs> <laughs> ladies, if you don't know what this oh is, get God. to fucking know it, okay? <laughs> this is called the magic wand, and it'll make you orgasm like you never believe. And if... You thought you weren't a squirter. It's going to make you a liar. I should just promote this shit and get sponsored by it. Uh, but I, this I'm all bad girl, sponsors here. This bad girl has 12 horsepower and <laughs> 24 <laughs> torque. <laughs> all right. So four speeds. You're the worst. So and it's me, automatic. <laughs> from all the way over there, give me a tutorial how that thing works. Because I, I have no. That looks like a mic I could use for my podcast. <laughs> exactly. It looks like a mic. You don't insert it, by the way. That, that's not... <laughs> oh, Carl's taking a shit over there. Uh, you don't insert it. It is for your clitoris or yeah. for your vagina, but the outside Did of it. Did you find the clitoris before that? Oh, yeah. Okay. I, mm -hmm. I was okay. very... Uh, yeah. Always known. I've known that. Nice, nice. This okay. has different You're speeds. You're turning it on. It wants two speeds, three speeds. I can't. And you hear this shit. You hear it? <laughs> it's like a... <laughs> It's like a like a NASCAR race car. You hear that? 
bro. If, I cannot. I cannot. Wait, ladies, if you're watching this, right, go right. get you one or tell your man to go so, get you one. So, You'll thank me later. So take me to the process. So you're doing missionary and then she holds that, you hold that. Yeah, most of the time she'll hold it or I can hold it. I mean, she likes to hold it because, I mean, it's easier for the girl to hold it because she mm-hmm. can just move it to where she wants it. Uh, and then she can set, you know, the speed. You start, you know, maybe at two. Are She's, you good with this conversation? By the way? Okay, okay. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, uh. but yeah, no. I mean, this, this. It's like you love it more than her. Like you're just like adm- admiring it, dude. Oh, it's it, for both of it's us. It's for both of us. Wait, yeah. how do you use it? No, not for me. Oh. I like the pleasure I get out of her. Mm. Yeah, because you could feel it in your dick too. So like. When it's on her, you could feel it inside mm-hmm. while you're inside of her. You know what I mean? So it's like a, it's like a two for one special, like the Applebee's. <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> two for 20. Two see, for but the Applebee's I just put in and when it was time, it just went. Oh, yeah. See, and then um, we got it out and oh. then, you know. Well, I'm, you know, you could use both of them actually because you can use the insert one and then you get mm-hmm. this one and then you can put it on that. I mean, obviously, like, you can insert it too, but I mean, Homegirl could have both. At the same All right, time. Let me, what, what, what are you into? Like the freakiest thing, the freakiest. freakiest thing. Like, what do you like? I mean, I don't really get that. I'm freaky. not gonna ask her. It's your, but I'm asking you. We have a power tool sex toy that we have. That it's a machine, and it's and it's a dildo that like. Okay, now, but what do you like? What like, do I like? Like you. Uh, <laughs> I didn't want to know that. Oh, so, <laughs> let's see. What's something you like? Uh, what do I like? I'm a man of simple taste, honestly. Like. I get more pleasure out of pleasuring, I guess. You could That's say. me right there. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I get more pleasure out of pleasuring. To me, I mean, I'm not into like the butt stuff. Like mm-hmm. the guy, I mean, it's I. Right. Have they ever eaten, eaten your ass? Uh, once, and it was interesting, to say the least. She's like, when? Yeah, no, not no, her. No, no, no. Butt stuff is not his mm. thing. Yeah. He doesn't like butt stuff to no. himself. Yeah. Like even blowjobs to me, like I'm not like a like the biggest fan of blowjobs really? either. Yeah, I guess because like uh, unless like you're like an expert at it, which like ninety percent of women aren't, and that's not because uh, not their fault. It's just that guys know how to pleasure themselves better than a woman does. And blowjob, I mean, that's a hard thing to do, like for for a guy. Like so, to me, it's like I really do get more pleasure out of pleasuring than. Mm-hmm. Uh, I guess myself. Five minutes, ten minutes, thirty minutes. Yeah, um, f- fifteen minutes and and up for sure. You're good with fifteen minutes. Yeah, mm-hmm. dog, you'll be good with five minutes <laughs> if you know. Dude, what that's, that's, that's things crazy. Did you hear it? I, just, <laughs> I have the I have the headphones. We we heard we, we heard, heard that thing. You know, with the headphones. <laughs> I could I could have put my headphones down here and it would have worked the same thing. Yeah. I think, you know, it was that the neighbor strong, heard it. bro. Damn. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't think we were going to jump to the sex thing with that quick. Hey, so. you wanted content, dog. You got it. <laughs> Careful what you wish for. Oh, my God. How's that pizza? Dude, this is amazing. Um, I don't I don't even want to eat the, the slice because I'm getting full. Okay. So you could have it. I definitely will take it. Yeah. Um, dude, I don't even know what to ask for now. I'm like, Did I stump you? Yeah, I'm just like. Are you damn. like, fuck, I'm afraid to ask because he's going to bring oh, the no, sex you, toy out. No, I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm flattered that you guys no brought that filter. thing out. I'm flattered, you know. You know the content I do, but... He was worried that I was going to be shy earlier. See, it's because <laughs> when I met him, he was very, like, like you know, hyper and happy and, and partied. And, and then I I met him right now, and he was, like, all quiet. I was like, wait, this is not the guy I met, you know? <laughs> this is a totally different dude. He was partying with his boys and stuff and jumping and dancing. And oh, then, my gosh. And here he, he was, like... Would you like some water, sir? <laughs> it was so nice to me. Would like, you wait. like some spring water? Yeah. Would you care for some tea? <laughs> a so crumpet. I, I Put on your glasses, dude. Like, I don't want that snag for me. <laughs> I know. Oh, I no. put sunglasses on, too. <laughs> I mean. but no, dude. No, it's, it's no he's not shy. You just don't ask him single questions because he hasn't been single in a very long time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, so what's your game? Like, what? Help me out right now. Even though you've been in a relationship for 12 years, mm-hmm. how would you hit up a girl right now? Let's say you were single. If I was single? And the girl, and the girl's just staring at you. She she hasn't said anything to you. You don't know her from social media. How would you hit her up? I would go to her father and ask her. <laughs> her father. I would go to her father and introduce yeah, myself. Yeah, you're not helping me out, bro. You know? <laughs> you're not helping me out right now. If she has a father. Oh. And if she doesn't, she daddy man, issues. is it going to be a fun night. Okay. <laughs> I, 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 you're so dumb. Like, how would you? 
how how yeah. would you hit on girls like besides me? Like, do, do you think? Do you think? I know our story is like very weird, but like if we if you were single and you're like, oh my god, she's pretty, like how would you walk up to her? Yeah, her it's house? because the inform the the knowledge that I obtain, I once I write the book, everybody can know the secrets. But right now, I want to uh, know. Give me <laughs> give me some tips. It's really not that hard. So you see the girl, magnet. she's she's just looking at you and stuff. <laughs> yeah. She's staring at you. And I'm not here. Like, yeah, you're you single. You don't girl. have a girl. You you never seen that vibrate in your life. Like, <laughs> like, what do you do, bro? Um, let's see. What? How would I do? What would I do? I mean, you've like slept with like 50 girls oh before me, Lord. so clearly you know how to hit yeah. on a girl. If you want a mic? Put the mic. Like, I mean, oh, like, yeah. There you go. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Um. I, it's i mean it's really hard i honestly don't have like a strategy i just really am myself to for the most part i really am um and i don't really have game i think having game is so overrated i think but i'm just to me i know i'm not ugly so it is this is just in all fairness and, and being like real now like it it's a little bit easier for attractive people to to have quote unquote game. Mm -hmm. Like you don't really need it all that much. Um, so for me, I've never really needed it. Um, what I will say though, is if you're funny, if you can make the woman laugh, I mean, she's already with her hands up because her panties just fell. Whoa. But <laughs> but this is what I'm telling you is like, but you have to be funny in the sense of like where you're not see some guys think that like you have to be funny like making fun of the girl i'm, right, so I'm the girl make yeah. me laugh for now and you yeah. know it's hard to make me laugh go ahead <laughs> i just made you laugh this whole fucking podcast <laughs> all right go make me but, laugh but see that's the thing is like i we, i would have to be already engaged in a conversation to to make you laugh um okay but like how would you like walk yeah, up to I'm, a girl i'm, I'm waiting like, for you i don't to walk up to girls <laughs> what that's why uh, we're putting you a scenario right now. He's like, they walk yeah. up to me. The girl's <laughs> staring at you, and you want to go up to her. Like how? Like how? How would you? All right, give him an example. You give him an example. There's a guy I, that you think is attractive, and you're gonna go. Up to, how do you do it? She's better at going up to guys than I am going up to girls. I don't go up to. Girls. How would you do it? Well, okay, it's because I schmooze for a living. That is like my job. Like okay. mm -hmm. when it comes to my agency or like to whatever. Like I know how to talk to people, mm -hmm. so I know how to walk up. So, like, I would either co start a conversation of, um, you know, like, depending on, like, what they're wearing or if I, um, I'm very good at eavesdropping. So, like, I'll eavesdrop on the conversation and be like, oh, my God, like, I love, like, I love that movie or I love, like, that place. Like, I just went to this restaurant. Like, how did you like it? I ate this and mm -hmm. la, la, la. And then they're like, oh, my God. Like, uh, they would engage back with me. And then I'm very good at asking, like, um. I'm like, what are, the, what, what are they called? Rhetorical questions? So, like, if it's a yes or no question, like, I don't ask that type of question. Like, they have to answer me specifically. Mm -hmm. um, and that's kind of, like, where I get things started. I don't know. If it's just been always my background or what I've just always been taught how to do um, in my line of work. So that's how I close deals. Um, <laughs> I would like to say rich white men are my cup of tea because I <laughs> kind of choose them till they, like, I don't know, put their wallet in front of me. <laughs> so, <laughs> so they pay for the whole night? Yeah, but I mean, I'm always interested in this because literally Manny was, I love to say that Manny and I are in an um, arranged marriage because <laughs> 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 because my grandma and his parents like literally set up our relationship and he was forced upon me and I just, he just happened to like me when I was in middle school and I got lucky, but I always tell him like, how did you hit on girls? Because one, I don't know any of his what his any of his ex look like. He still hasn't tell us right now. Exactly. So I don't even know how he hits on girls because I know how he was forced to hit on me, but I don't know how he was like out there in the wild. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like tell, because tell he us. was twenty one before, <clears throat> what two years before I was. So yeah. like I want to know how he would hit on other girls when he was either single or not single or. It's you know, like whatever. he said, it makes it easier because he's an attractive guy. But but like well, you had to say something. Yeah, like, so hey, well, that, that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm, like let I'm, me buy you a drink or like. Yeah, there's attractive know, guys that they're pretty stupid. Me or you know, people have said worse. She she me. knows I'm hilarious. Like I am very funny, and yeah. I know that I am. And that's just that's I guess what I use as mm -hmm. my, I guess, 
my move. But the thing is, like, I'm and I'm. I swear to God, this is just how it's always been my whole life. Is I've never gone up to women, or I never really go up to women. It's mostly like the women, not that they come after me, but they somehow try to get to me, whether it's like a friend being like, hey, my friend likes you, my friend thinks you're cute. Just like how we're talking about the arranged marriage. Like your grandma coming to get me and or whatever. And it's also funny because I've always bombarded like certain situations that he's been in. Like even when he graduated high school, like I showed up to his, what is it? Like senior whatever. Oh, yeah. And like before <laughs> he even had a chance to like start talking to another girl, he was just like, what the hell are you doing here? And then we start making out and like <laughs> fucking up. <laughs> so, so you guys are meant to be. You think you guys are meant to be? Yeah. Oh, a thousand percent. We've had like way too many like coincidences in our lives. When is it destiny, or you guys just think they're soulmates? Mm, both. Yeah, I think. Like it's just a little bit both. Because like even like the place that we lost our virginities to each other, I think like two years later, he I haven't talked to him in like a good year and a half. And he calls me and he's like, you'll never believe where I'm at. And I'm with my ex-boyfriend and like, I, um, I like snuck out of my grandma's house to meet him at this party. And like, we got like fucked up together mm. <laughs> because it was like the same apartments that we lost our virginity to each other. That's fucking cute, bro. <laughs> you want to know a funny story? I have to go ahead, bro. Speaking of the apartments, we can talk about like funny places we've done it. But let's talk about funny places we've gotten caught doing it. Oh. <laughs> All right, but there was one time when she was with her ex, I went over to the apartment complex, her grandma's apartment complex, and she snuck into my car, and I was parked like in the parking lot. We're in the back scene, we're banging, right? Mm-hmm. And her ex had been calling her all night, all night. He was just ignoring her, ignoring, ignoring her. This fucking guy pulls up next to my car, straight up pulls up right next to my car. He had no idea what I drove. He had no idea we were in the back seat. We just see she knew the she knew the truck, so she immediately knew like who like who it was. I didn't know who it was. She's like, Oh my god, my ex just parked next to you and I was like, Shut the fuck up as I'm like pile driving her. And then luckily the windows were a little bit foggy, so like this fool gets out of the car and literally like walks like around my like car. Oblivious. <laughs> Had no idea we're in the back seat. It wasn't foggy? I mean a little bit. It was like a little foggy, but, but I guess like he's not anticipating me to have mm. sex in a car, you know? So like mm-hmm. he it's not like in his And then park next look. next to the car where she's at. <laughs> what are the odds, right? Yeah. He literally parked right next to us. Like stood outside for like terrified. a minute. You can see him dialing her again, and her <laughs> phone is ringing while we're in the car. This who's calling her, and her phone's ringing while we're in the fucking back seat. And we're just like, no way, this is happening right now. Been calling, her and finally, he like walks around, and then he like starts walking to like I guess where her grandma's apartment is. She gets dressed, books it out of the car, and pretends like she was, like, across the street just walking on the phone. Like, she's uh, talking to, like, I don't know, uh, her cousin Allison or something. (laughs) Bro, what the fuck? We have been through a lot. I can't believe it. You have no idea. She came walking from, like, just ran all the way to the side. (laughs) Came walking, came walking this way, like, like on the shaking, phone, like, like pretending like she just, just came know, like 20 times. Because I used to have him under my phone as Bella. Like she was like oh. my bestie oh. in high school. Oh, Bella. Oh, Bella. But <laughs> he was Bella and like he had no idea. Like, mm. I mean, he was a piece of shit. So whatever. So mm-hmm. he deserves whatever is coming Fuck to him. him. But Whoa. like, <laughs> he's just like, who the hell is Bella? And I was like, oh, like I knew her from St. Rico's. Like she's like my best friend. La, la, and <laughs> biggest dong ever. <laughs> they picked from Bella. And she, you know, <laughs> Bella has the biggest dong ever. Too. <laughs> and, I mean, who knows if he knows now? I mean, I don't care at this point, but like. <laughs> That'd be hilarious. It was always like my thing if mm. I ever had to like, because. We would go through, like, these periods, and, like, we won't, we wouldn't, like, talk to each other because we were through, like, in our own relationships, our own worlds, and then we, something would connect us to each other. Somehow. And it's funny because how we reconnected is, um, I was, I literally just finished hooking up with my ex, and my big from the sorority call. she texts me, and she has, like, her arm around Manny. Oh, yeah. And she was like, doesn't this guy look like Vinny from Jersey Shore? <laughs> oh, my God. Like... <laughs> <laughs> As I'm naked in bed and I call her and I was like, 
I was like, I was like, where are you? She's like, oh, I'm here at the frat house. And I was like, put him on the phone right now. And she's like, no, like, I'm going to claim him for the night. Like, I want to hook up with him. And I was like, no, bitch, put him on the phone <laughs> right this second. And See, like, I she's don't go like, after them, bro. I'm and she's like, you. what? And I was like, put him on the phone right now. And she puts him on the phone and he's just like, hello. And I'm like, where the hell are you? And he recognized my voice clearly. And he's like, he's like, Danielle. And I'm like, no. I was like, yes. Yeah. So I was like, where the hell are you? He's like, oh, I'm here at the frat house. And I was like, give me 20 minutes. I'm going to be right there right now. And I was like, don't you dare touch her. Don't you fuck anybody. And then he's just, I mean, clearly at that point, he's just like, oh, like, I'm I'm yours. Like, there's no, nothing's going to happen. Like, I'm not even going to, like, pretend to hook up with your big or nothing. Did you and know? Did you know they were? No. No, no I had no idea. No idea. I had zero, and, like, zero my ex clue. was looking at me like, what the fuck? And I was like. Sorry, bitch. Like, I got to go. Like, I, gotta, <laughs> I was on the Emergency. East side, and I went all the way by UTEP <laughs> to, really like, meet up with him. Running UTEP. <laughs> and, like, that's how, like, our relationship, I guess, basically picked up from there. <laughs> that's so crazy, man. <laughs> like, you guys are definitely meant to be, bro. Honestly. Oh, yeah. Like, <laughs> I, I need to find something like that real soon because I mean, I'm getting old, you know? I'm getting old. And you're not that old, though. No, but you guys have been together for, like, 12 years now, you I know? Mean, yeah. Oh yeah, we've been through a lot. Longest I had mm. it was three years. Yeah, and I know. she cheated. So oh fuck. Mm. So you said that was like in 2016. 20 uh, 2016 20. to 2019. Yeah. So you've been single for? Oh uh, no, I had a relationship after that. Oh you did? Oh okay. Yeah. Okay. So it didn't work out, but yeah. I mean, I don't, it's, it's just so hard to date now. You know. It it on it is a lot tougher. I would and I me and Danny have talked about it too. Was like it would be a lot harder to date now than it ever was back in the day especially like, now that you guys already know and imagine let's hope it never happens right you guys finish break up mm -hmm. you know how many people would hit up on you guys like asap dog oh, from both yeah. sides yeah I'm, I'm sure there's crazy yeah i'm sure there's a line waiting crazy. for danny <laughs> and then because we got back together like when like dating apps started to become like a thing so like we've yeah, never we been on tinder that. like grinder like whatever so we don't even know like that lifestyle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's a whole nother realm yeah. that. That's crazy. Well, I think we hit like thirty-five minutes already, dude. That's oh, crazy. That this okay. is this is the explicit. <laughs> this, is, this is the content that the should be on the hours. OnlyFans. This is this is this is. Yeah, I know. He this was thing. telling me about making an OnlyFans and posting other interviews that I can't post on YouTube. Honest, honestly, you should. It's good money. It's risky though. Mm -hmm. I mean. Just put the stuff that you feel Not like more if, comfortable if, with. If you feel that like you don't have any like clients or like work that like would worry about it, I would say do it. Mm -hmm. But if you do, then that's where it gets like a little iffy because like that's where like I had to like, you know, put my life into perspective. But if you don't, honestly, you can make good money off yeah. of it. I mean, maybe not now, but like in the future, like once like you start getting like a really good rep, mm -hmm. and then these <clears throat> people start tuning in like more like frequently, regularly, mm -hmm. then and and then. Especially like when you have like that content, there's always going to be like those people that there's always going to be a group of people that know this one person and they just want to know every they were like, I want to know what the fuck's up with this fucking guy. And it could be yeah. somebody like me. I don't know. It could be like because I think I've interviewed porn star, one well, one porn star, only fans, girls or yeah. girls are very viral. And like there you go. Bar bartenders. Yeah, there, there's I'm telling you, especially girls, there's going to be like. People that just they just want to know like the mm -hmm. dirty like their little the secrets gossip. yeah the, they yeah. want the cheese bro, so but yeah damn but yeah we we doing good I don't know if you guys want to give your socials and and uh, I think for to to end it now yeah go for it oh I mean I'm at savvy dot d on Instagram TikTok wherever <laughs> everyone if you guys want to follow me s a v i i dot d e e okay cool and I'm DJ Snack but it's underscore DJ dot snack and I only use Instagram to be honest, so just hit me up on Instagram or SoundCloud, same thing. And I'm Alex Majestic on Instagram, nine one vibes on TikTok, and Alex Rosney on Twitter. Um, any advice you want to give the people to end it and you too? Uh, you want to go first? What advice do you have? Any for advice for any, the young for the young uh, out there? Stop being jealous out there, girls. Like, yeah. I mean, unless your man gives you a reason, but if your man does not give you a reason, jealousy and toxicity will kill your entire life. Because there's one thing that I learned from my ex, like going into like my relationship with Danny. Yeah, don't be toxic and trust your man if he's trustworthy, mm -hmm. because your life will be grand. There you go. Mine would be. 
buy uh, this motherfucker right here. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. No, not really. Uh, drink water. Um, pray a little bit. Um, follow fasting. Fo- intermittent fasting. Follow your dreams. Eat organic, non-GMO. Uh, break your fast correctly. And uh, <laughs> apple cider vinegar. Probiotics. <laughs> Well, I think that's going to be it for today. Remember, guys, I try to post podcasts once every week and an interview once every 12 days. Uh, Comment, like, (laughs) subscribe. Send me your next uh, questions for the interviews. We'll see if I if I see him one day, you know, out there again, and uh, (laughs) I'll I'll make him. He says he's pretty smart with those, so I want to see. Yeah, see if if I can can catch him. And her, I never seen you out at bars and stuff so we'll, <laughs> we'll see oh what she's I'll, out there i'll get I you with those questions yeah. so. <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys for watching again remember to subscribe and don't take shit too serious thank you. you amen peace out <laughs>